Shortly after Lucinda and I moved in together, she heard from a friend that she hadn't seen in years. You know, some chick she used to get high with in middle school had just moved back into town and called her up to see if they could get together. And Lucinda was crazy stoked. Apparently the two of them were inseparable until they were separated. Okay, shit word choice. But, th but they were really good friends. You get the idea. So we invite her to our new place the next day. And by the time she gets here, Lucinda's had plenty of time to really talk this chick up. You know, in school, the two of them had been kindred spirits amid a flood of Southern Baptists. So when she shows up, I'm expecting this free thinking, don't give a fuck anti-theistic party animal. And that is not at all what we got. See, in the intervening years, Lucinda's friend had found Jesus. She had quit her sinful ways. She stopped drinking, stopped getting high, stopped using naughty words, stopped dressing comfortably, and stopped being fun to hang out with. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you have to drink and get high and cuss and dress a certain way to be fun to hang out with. Generally speaking, you just have to be yourself. But, of course, she'd also stopped doing that. So, very clearly disappointed, Lucinda asked her why. And quite literally, that was the question. She says, I'm a Christian now. And Lucinda just stares at her for a second and goes, why? And as much as it cracked me up at the moment, it's a fair question. Look, the two of them had spent years commiserating about the damage that religion did to the people around them. So how could she set all that aside? And did she stop knowing the stuff she used to know? Did she hear some exemplary apologetic that changed her mind? And I'll never forget her fucking answer. She just said, you know, life is so much simpler now. And you know what? I'll grant her that. Life gets really fucking simple when you just let somebody else do all your thinking for you. Life is full of tough questions and tough problems, and the answers are often way too complex. I completely sympathize with a person who just gets overwhelmed by all the shit life's throwing at them and looks for a simpler option than actually solving their problems. I've done that shit myself from time to time. You know, I mostly use drugs and self-destructive behavior, but it serves the same purpose, and as it happens, it works equally well. Because the sad fact is, there is no simple. Simple is an illusion that we pick up from TV shows and charlatans. Simple is a sales pitch. If you want a simple life, go find yourself a good coma. But if you want to lie, if you want somebody to offer you a simple that isn't really there, well, lucky you, we've got a church for that. If you're depressed about the death of a loved one, the real answer is a long mourning process that never quite zeroes out. But the simple answer is a post-mortem surprise party. If you're struggling to find your place in the world, hey, welcome to humanhood. We'll be with you eventually, maybe. Now, if you actually want to solve that problem, it's going to take you at least a decade, and by then the answer will have changed and you'll have to start over. Pretty fucking complicated. But if you want to simple it up a bit, no worries. God already knows the purpose of your life, so it doesn't even matter that you don't. Facing a complicated task that you're not certain you're going to succeed at, well, you could practice a lot and study a lot and do your damnedest, but if that's too complicated, you could always pray instead. Now, of course, none of the simple solutions work, you know, even the religious person who professes a belief that they'll meet their loved one again in heaven still mourns for them. Turns out your brain doesn't really give a shit what you're consciously trying to convince yourself of. It still misses the shit out of grandma and knows it'll never see her again. And God having a plan doesn't make sorting your own purpose out any easier. Prayer doesn't improve your test scores, but it does make those problems really easy to ignore for a while. And, you know, it's not just the big emotional issues. Religion can work its magic in all the big intellectual dilemmas as well. Evolution is hard to get your head around. Big Bang cosmology is hard to understand. Quantum physics is counterintuitive as hell. But if you're willing to opt for simple over sedulous, you can just spackle over all those gaps in your knowledge with a single infinitely malleable deity. Again, you run into the same problem with all your answers being wrong and useless, but at least you don't have to come to grips with your own ignorance very often. Ideally, you could live in a world where other people figure all that shit out, invent the smartphone, and then sell it to you so you can use it to tell people how wrong science is. And I get it. I get the appeal of throwing your hands up in the air and letting Jesus take the cerebral wheel. Life is frustrating and complicated and hard, and it never makes any fucking sense. So I understand why a person would hide from reality in a building dedicated to a fictional character and try to drown out their nagging questions with a hymn. Because because like A.J. Mencken said, for every complex problem, there's an answer that is clear, simple, and wrong. And nothing's clearer, simpler, or wronger than God. But you can't solve problems from a pew, and you can't answer questions with a prayer. Christianity had the entire Dark Ages and then some to prove that. If you want to advance, you have to embrace the complexity and accept your ignorance. You have to beat it back where you can, sure. But at the same time, you also have to come to grips with the fact that there will always be way more questions you can't answer than the ones that you can. And you have to leave the simple answers to the people with the minds that match them.